Before I get started, I do consulting on where you can move. I'll work with you to find the perfect place for you to move to. There's more information at the end of the video about that. Now let's get started. Yes, that's a homeless guy peeing in the fancy shopping district in Palm Springs, just a block or so from the weekly farmer's market. He didn't really seem to care he was doing this in public. To be honest, it looked like this was his normal routine. When you gotta go, you gotta go, I guess. Jesus. I saw bums on almost every block downtown the nights I was here. People didn't really seem to like that very much. Because this is Palm Springs, everyone. Home of the fancy wealthy people. A place to be all cool and hip and cosmopolitan. For a long time, this desert city's been the upscale go-to place for entertainment, dining, and the arts. A sunny getaway for the elderly elite. It's still got some mojo, and Palm Springs has a lot of that funky desert charm. But more and more, you see the type of California problems this place has been immune to. Homelessness, crime, poverty, drug use, jerks. I came to Palm Springs on day 12 of my California homecoming tour. I hadn't been here in 13 years. And what the hell? Is there any place in this state that's not getting ruined? California, where Blessing and I spent our Christmas holidays, a modern little winter resort city that came to be known as the playground of the stars. It seems incredible that a little more than 30 years ago, this tiny village had few accommodations for visitors. Today, there are more than 300 hotels, rainurious to modest, to meet the requirements of the quarter of a million winter sun worshippers who visit Palm Springs each season. Those were the good old days when old stars like Bob Hope, Bean Crosby, Frank Sinatra, Elvis, and other A-listers loked up here and made this place so cool. It certainly was luxurious back in the day. There's still some of today's celebs who make this place home, but they're not as classy as the old crew was. No one can match the charm of Cary Grant. And this place itself isn't as charming as it once was. It kind of seems a little dated now. You could call today's Palm Springs a cheap vacation destination. Uh-oh. There's 45,000 people that make Palm Springs their permanent home. But when winter comes, the populations triple that. There's all these wealthy old-timers who head out here to enjoy their second homes. Let's talk about the good first. I mean, Palm Springs really is a nice place. Right now, we're on Palm Springs' main drag. It's called Indian Canyon Drive. This part of downtown is the main reason people come here. There's a lot to do. Spas and salons are a big deal. So it's fancy shopping, fine dining, drinking Cosmos, and listening to music. There's a couple casinos here, too. It's all very nice, though the place closes down pretty early. And I don't think kids would have a lot of fun out here. It's very artsy in Palm Springs. There's art museums on just about every block. They hold film festivals and music festivals here all year long. The architecture is beautiful. And so are the people with their hairs did and unassumingly expensive shorts and sandals with their purses and sunglasses. It goes on and on. Golf, tennis, laying out by the pool. The perfect place for snowbirds and retirees and day trippers. This place was the place to go for spring break for decades. Kind of the Daytona Beach of Southern California. It all peaked in 1986 when there was a big riot at spring break. People got hurt and stuff got ruined. Said sin, they basically said, don't come here for your spring breaks, damn it. And it really hasn't been the same here since. It's very gay friendly here. They say half of Palm Springs' population's gay. And that would make it the most gay-friendly place in the country. It's supposedly one of the gayest places in the world, actually. The current mayor's transgender, 
The previous mayor was bisexual. The entire city council's gay. There's even a radio station here called K-Gay. And how did Palm Springs become a place for gays? Hollywood. All the gay movie stars felt more comfortable living far away from Los Angeles, which is about two hours to the west. And as Hollywood began to take hold here, Hollywood tried to make this place better. Soon, the stars turned this quiet place in the desert into a wealthy, healthy place full of sex appeal. Word spread, and Palm Springs became really popular. Pretty soon, Palm Springs became known as a place for wealthy white people. And that's how it was for a long time. But today, the place is changing. And that's where the fun comes in. Because nobody wants to watch a video about some old boring rich people, right? It's getting younger here now. I mean, they're opening up all these new birthing centers around town. I don't think the old timers care so much about that, though. I don't think the old timers really care that all the new people moving in aren't rich anymore. But I do think some of them don't like the diversity, though. These upper classers come here to slow down and enjoy the sun, not listen to loud music they don't understand. I hear there's even a bit of a racist element going on here, with all the old white people turning up their noses at the growing Latino community that's creeping in from nearby Indio and Coachella. Today, it's about 75% white and 25% Hispanic in Palm Springs. There's a big gap between the rich and poor here now. In today's Palm Springs, one in five residents is in poverty. You would have never imagined that back in the 1970s. Uh-uh. Where we are now is what they call their bad side of town. Although it's really not bad, bad. This is Gateway Estates, or what locals call Tripod Estates. I don't know why they call it that, but when I asked where the worst part of town was, everybody said it was on the north end. I hear there's gang shootings here, and somebody told me I'd be held up at gunpoint here, if you can believe it. <laughs> Some people need to get out of the house more. This ain't Oakland. It's like comparing Playboy to Nickelodeon. But the fact remains, parts of Palm Springs are not so springy anymore. And these parts are growing. Homes in this part of town are close to $300,000, if you can believe it. I don't know how some of these people can afford it. It's so expensive out here, and it's super hard to try to get your life in order. I mean, you can't leave the house without spending 100 bucks in California anymore. That's pretty sketch. Then there's North Palm Springs. This part of town also has a terrible reputation among Springers. You tell somebody you live up in North Palm Springs, and they'll be like, Ew, gross. You can kind of see why. It's a little sketchy. But the trash everywhere is what makes the place crummy. Come on, people. This is the damn desert. Clean it up. Palm Springs isn't dangerous, but it's a lot worse here than it used to be. It's the same thing you see all over California. Not enough cops, and they let everybody out of jail. And they let everyone do whatever they want sometimes, too. If you want to work here, there's not a lot of good jobs here unless you're in tourism or retail. Those don't pay much. I'm guessing a lot of the people on this side of town could make a decent wage at the area casinos. Some will eventually get priced out and have to move to desert hot springs. And that's a real drug infested place, I tell ya. Now let's look at where the average Palm Springs neighborhoods look like. This is that. A lot of the city looks like this, actually. Just nice looking homes with landscapers on call. If you wanted to buy a house in something like this, it would be in the $700,000 to $800,000 range. Palm Springs is known for having really cool architecture. I'm not an architecture expert, but I'm guessing this is something like mid-century modern. I'm sure back in the day, these homes had big old Cadillacs in the driveway. I bet some of these homes had color televisions, too. There's an even fancier part of town called the Movie Colony Neighborhoods. I think famous people lived in this hood one time. This is what that looks like, though you can't really see much since it's all walled off. There isn't anything in here under a million bucks behind those walls. One thing people fight about in Palm Springs is all the rentals. A lot of folks here have turned their homes into Airbnbs. <laughs> that sucks. 
can't have that in this part of town, right? And they definitely wouldn't put up with that in the super rich part of town over here along the hillside. You can't actually see too much in the snob hoods. A lot of these homes are behind walls or tucked pretty far back, but they're all very pretty. And you can bet there ain't nothing up here under two million smackers. Really cool houses, I have to say. Whoever lives up here along the Palm Springs hillsides is very lucky. If you wanted really, really wealthy out this way, you'd have to leave Palm Springs entirely and head out to Rancho Mirage, La Quinta, Indian Wells, Bermuda Dunes. Most of the stuff out that way is in the millions of dollars, and they're going up like 25% every year. Just a lot of conservatives who fled L.A. out there. And over here are where the friendly, working-class Hispanic people live. Folks who drive into Palm Springs to work for the rich people. They say Palm Springs is a place that accepts you exactly who you are and a place where you can be yourself. <laughs> well, looking around parts of Palm Springs, and I bet they wish they could take that back because these people look like they're taking them up on their offer. You may not know it, but Palm Springs has the biggest homeless population per capita in Riverside County. The growing homelessness here has become a big sore spot among Palm Springers. The well-funded Palm Springs PD does make an attempt to shoo them along. And there's a lot of desert rehab places that'll try to take them in and talk sense into them. But it's California, and this is the desert. So a lot of people feel extra incentivized to consume drugs, get drunk, and sleep on the streets. A lot of the homeless people here actually stay out of downtown. They camp out in the desert, or they make little tent villages in the open spaces. All over town now, you see people wandering around, possibly having just been let out of rehab. Part of the problem out here is reliable mental health treatments hard to get for poor people. And I think a lot of the people here have families, but they're fed up with them, so they can't go home. That sucks. Anyways, these homeless people are doing their best to ruin this place. There's been a big jump in thefts, broken car windows, poop on the ground, naked people wandering around and open drug use. Walk around downtown now and you see pee stains, broken bottles, trash, abandoned bedding. Some folks here say it's plaguing downtown. I heard some business owners say their customers were afraid to get out of their cars and shop. Uh-oh. Get this. Palm Springs is considering something they call leveraged deterrence. I'd never heard that term before. Basically, they want to make criminals feel guilty about committing crimes, so that way they won't be a-holes anymore. <laughs> really? I don't think that's going to work. They're actually talking about putting porta-potties downtown now so the bums won't pee and poop everywhere. Can you imagine that? In Palm Springs, porta-potties downtown? I can't imagine the rich people here would be okay with that. I just don't understand how there's a housing crisis here. There's lots of room to build. I mean, we're in the middle of the damn desert. I don't know. But what I do know is it is hot out in this desert. The average temperature is 100 degrees in the summer. 125 has happened. I bet we're going to see summer days at 130 this decade. That's like drain your soul hot. I remember back in the day, we used to run around here barefoot when it was 115. And that hurt. They do get a few inches of rain here, though. I guess that's something. And when the sun goes down behind the mountains, there's some pleasant air. If I lived here, I'd be married to a really successful man, and I'd have big fake boobs. <laughs> I'm sure you would. But I don't think a sugar daddy is going to date a plain Jane map with no investments. Plain Jane? Yeah. And? Whatever. Well, in Palm Springs, I did a lot. Southern California has the best Mexican food in the world. And if you can't find a good mom and pop, you have to settle for a chain. And nothing beats Del Taco. They're everywhere here. 
So I began my second morning here with a nice big bag of Del Taco. And no, they didn't pay me to say that. I wish they did. Mm, mm, mm. I went to Palm Springs weekly street fair market thing. It's actually really big, like 10 blocks long or something. A lot of people come down here and check out the vendors and listen to music. Just a regular old weekly market, except some people were overdressed, in my opinion. It's a very pleasant and safe experience, this market is, except for the bums in the bushes. And too bad it's 90 degrees all year long. Downtown Palm Springs has a lot of high-end shopping. We saw some of that already. Benjamin Perduro. Ooh, so high-end. I don't know if the upper elite here would be okay with a thrift store, though. Uh-oh. And a lazy lizard. That's new. Palm Springs has really nice hotels downtown, but I didn't stay in those. Who do I look like? Instead, I chose a budget motel on the edge of downtown. And boy, was that place sketch. I stayed at the Motel 6. That's my room right there. All night, I could hear people on drugs yelling and moaning. And they all left their doors open too, which is weird. I can only imagine how many people laid in my sorry excuse for a bed and dreamed about their next crack hit. And is that blood on my hotel room floor? What the hell? Palm Springs is still a pretty nice place. But it's not paradise anymore, I'll tell you that. The smaller town feel here is long gone. It's not just a peaceful, quiet retirement community anymore. Today's Palm Springs is more Airbnbs. The traffic is worse, the people are more rude, there's more bums laying in the streets. There's a lot more thieves and druggies wandering around. And I don't think there's a plan to slow the surge or anything. But all that said, it definitely could be worse for California. I like Palm Springs. It's just interesting to see how much it's changed. The next day, I would drive 20 miles north to visit the worst place to live in the California desert. That's where the druggies really live. All right, Brad. Well, so you you live in Palm Springs. You and I talked before the trip, and you kind of gave me a, a little bit of an idea on some stuff that I should look at and what to expect. And um, give me a, give me your opinion on what the vibe is. I, I know that it's changed there. I've talked to some people who say that it's it's getting younger, it's getting more diverse, which is fine. But they also mm -hmm. talk about how there's um, homeless and, and drug addicts that are that have moved out to the to the desert, Coachella Valley now, and that can be that's frustrating for a lot of people. Have you yeah. um, heard? the conversation about that what have you experienced um yeah it's i've got to say over the past year i maybe i was still in that you know phase of not noticing it the first year i was here but over this last year i would say that it's definitely much more noticeable and um yeah i was just at target earlier today and i had three uh non-domiciled people ask me for money and yeah, it, it, that wasn't happening last year, but it's happening this year, apparently. So that seems to be something that is trending in the wrong direction. Do you think it's a cost of living thing on Palm Springs or is it a drug thing? Mental 100 percent. I, I, the cost of living out here is astronomical. Um, but you're going to get that in any city in California, I believe. It's it's the premium for the states like it's just the way it is. And Palm Springs being its, you know, ritzy self, it's uh, it's already exorbitant. But yeah, I, you know, obviously I would agree that, you know, a lack of availability for mental health and uh, there there is a lot of drug issues out here. Mm -hmm. hey, you're a recovered addict yourself so it, yes. you have a unique perspective into this is there anything about palm springs that attracts folks that are addictive to drugs that, that have uh abuse issues all that 
Um, as far as that goes, I would say there's obviously a very heavy gay population out here. So a lot of people come out here on vacation or on a trip or whatever. And then they, you know, see this party lifestyle that Palm Springs supposedly is. And they fall in love with that notion and they move out here without thinking too much about it. And they get themselves in a lot more trouble because a it's expensive and B the, um, a lot of the, recovery homes out here are booked completely and there there's just no it's it's just a limit of population kind of thing mm-hmm. how how's the what's the news saying what's word on the street saying about the the huge influx of folks that are uh homeless uh, all, um, that are on drugs that are kind of needing mental care um are there plans to do anything are people frustrated or business owners frustrated i they um I, to be quite honest i don't really watch the news because who needs another downer in their life <laughs> um but they had a facility close to the airport that they were trying to open it used to be an old boxing ring or a boxing facility or something and um they're turning it into a, a shelter of sorts or a you know recovery place for people who are non-domiciled and uh i know there was a lot of pushback because it is right across the street from the airport so they're like oh well we don't want the first impressions of people visiting palm springs to be that we're just a homeless haven and uh, it's it's handy because it's right on a bus line and i think that's what they have to choose for obvious reasons well let's talk about the good palm springs because i still like the place it's still fun um it's still classy there's still most of the city is is fine um you can tell it's changed a lot it used to be have like there you'd never see any of the problems out in public at least uh that you Mm -hmm. do now um how do you how do you feel about Palm Springs? What what makes it a great place to you? I um well obviously it's a gay mecca and that's half the reason we moved out here. Um, it's just a completely different vibe from not only the U.S. but I would say a lot of California too. It's it's still it's still fairly laid back. You know you you get that you know whiff of pompous every once in a while when people try to display their, you know, wonderful baubles that they have, everything fancy. But I don't know. I would say overall it's it's pretty nice. I, I do enjoy living here. I with the exception of high cost of everything, but hey, you'll get that anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty decent place to live. And as you stated earlier, the demographics are changing. There's a lot um of younger people moving here, the the demographic is shifting to, you know, single families and, you know, people raising their families here in the Palm Springs Metro. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a shift. How do the, uh, like how do the old, old time, uh, rich snobby people feel about the demographics changing? <laughs> um, I'm sure they have very mixed feelings. The, um, pompous snobby people that are you know over the age of you know 60 or whatever they seem to have moved into i guess ritzier areas like indian wells uh rancho mirage parts of palm desert it's it's a very upscale ritzy part of the coachella valley again i hope palm springs um continues to fight off the, the California, the, the vibe that's kind of taken over most of the cities, it seems like it's been kind of immune to it, but um, mm-hmm. hopefully it can stay as nice as it can stay without get, getting overwhelmed like the rest of the state, right? Of course, yeah. And I was, I just, uh, not too long ago, I spent my first week in San Francisco and I was blown away by the amount of non-domiciled people. 
Yeah. They're very non-domicile people. Yeah. Probably yeah, never, ever going to be domiciled again. But yeah, it's, um, I'd say overall, I, I don't foresee myself moving anytime soon. I, I do enjoy the area. It's, you know, it's that perfect, for me, it's that perfect mix of, you know, gritty and desert life, but with a bit of a sparkle. It's it's glitzy and glamorous, but there's you know that weird soft underbelly that's kind of seedy. I like soft seedy underbellies. <laughs> Who doesn't? Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.